my favorite subject is funding deals, private money, all that kind of thing. So, uh, how have you funded your apartments, uh, in the past? All right. We've done a couple, every way you possibly can imagine we've done it. And, you know, I, I, I've learned so much from certain ways and would never do other things again. I've done, um, I bought property the right way, which is where you put the right amount of money down on a property. And when I say putting the amount of money down, I'm not saying it came out of my pocket. I'm saying that we came up to the closing table with 30%, 25, 30% uh, down payment, making the property easy to own and operate. We raised that money through friends and family. And the way we, we got that on board, and I, I had this conversation, a very similar conversation with you uh, when you were on my show, Jay, is you know you you build up your bank of potential investors and you cultivate them you work with them you tell them what you're doing you tell them why they're, you're doing uh looking at this particular property and not that particular property you tell them the whole story of the process and then when it comes time to pull the trigger when we finally got that deal on the contract and it's, it had passed due diligence when we got back on the horn with all of our investors Within nine days, we had all the funds we needed to fund that deal. So that's that's what I call doing it the right way. You know, we've done no money down deals. Uh, we've done uh, master lease options. We've done syndication. Uh, you know, we've done um, assumptions. Uh, every possible way you can do a deal, we've done it. Um, so that's that's uh, you know, and it's just really just like. You and I said before relationships, you guys have to build relationships with your uh, with your investors. And that's that's the easiest way to to make sure you have the dough when you're ready to go. Absolutely. Yeah. The reason private money is my favorite subject is, uh, first of all, you know, when I was investing from 2003 to 2009, I relied on local banks and institutions and, you know, uh, institutional money, if you will. And then I lost my lines of credit, you know, like the rest of everybody did 2008, 2009. And so this world of private money that you just mentioned, um, changed my business, like nothing like ever before. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sure that you get the same questions from your students in multifamily as I do from my students in single family. And that is how do I get the funding? And most people don't understand that private money's got nothing to do with traditional or institutional money. And so Charles, if you will allow me, I just want to give everybody my brand new money guide that I just finished writing. I told your audience about it. It's yep. called uh, seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business, help you build incredible wealth. This will get you on the fast track to private money. And where you make the rules it's brand it's uh brand new you can download it for free just go to www.jayconner j-a-y-c-o-n-n-e-r.com forward slash money guide that's jay connor with an e-r j-a-y-c-o-n-n-e-r.com forward slash money guide be sure and download that right after the show to get on the fast track to private money now back to what we were talking about charles um so what do you see in your crystal ball? I mean, right now, today, you and I are visiting in the second quarter of 2022. And um, you mentioned that you've got a plan to liquidate a lot of property that you got. Um, what do you see coming down the pike? You know, I'll tell you, it's amazing who you talk to uh, and, the, and the different uh their backgrounds and where their where their advice is coming from. Um, I honestly think that I've, I've had I did a podcast with Ivy Zellman. Uh, she's absolutely brilliant. Zellman Associates. She actually goes and um, uh, she works. Uh, her, her company is owned by Walker Dunlop, one of the biggest dust lenders for Fannie Mae. Uh, and her job is just to go out there and figure out what the market's doing. And I said to her, I said, you know, this is this, what's happening now is different than 2008 because back in 2008 uh, there wasn't sound underwriting back in 2008 if you could fog up a mirror you could get a mortgage now that's changed now you need kps and, and experience and what have you uh, i said and also the demand for our product the multifamily apartments right now is bigger than it ever has been so for those two reasons ivy this market is entirely different than 2008. So what do you see happening? And with a total straight face, Jay, she looked at me and said, it's worse. 
this market's in worse uh, situation than it was back in 2008. And it's a lot of the same things, but I, I asked her about um, uh, demand. She goes, right now we are overbuilt. But the amount of properties that are in the in the hopper get, that haven't even broken ground yet, we have more supply than we have demand for than that's coming up. And I'm sitting there listening to her and she's got all the numbers. I can't, I can't argue with her. I said, well, how about the market, different markets in different areas? I mean, up here in New Hampshire, it's an incredibly strong market. We've got, you know, 1% occupancy, 1% uh, vacancy rates. You know, it, it's not like that. She says, well, everyone thinks people are migrating to the South. That's not happening. When you look at the year over year change, there is no great massive migration that everybody's talking about. They're just talking as if there's a huge demand down the South and Southeast section. And I'm saying, Ivy, we're not seeing that at all. She was look at the numbers and she showed us the numbers and it just kind of blew you away. Then you label on top, on top of that, especially what's going on. Perfect, perfect example, Zillow, Zillow in Phoenix just unloaded 2000 single family homes that they had purchased cash because the demand is, is going away. The demand and all these build to rents, build to rent is like the new um, fair haired child of Wall Street. Those are gonna get hit the hardest. When you see these big corporations who are doing most of the buying right now, when you see these big corporations buying up swaths and then unloading them at below what they paid for, they know something is going on and they know something's gonna happen. Uh, part of the problem is that these big corporations, these big funds have purchased these homes and all these single family properties using uh, uh, stock prices that were that were inflated. Now we're seeing the stock market just dropped and we're talking about it happening even more. And those there's going to be a call on those in, in a default a call. And that's when you're going to start seeing things happening where those 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 stock um uh, those uh funds are going to have to have a um oh gosh I'm, I'm blanking here jay on the name of uh when when the when the, the stock when they um when the stock market when the when your broker calls you and because he's short on cash uh because you're 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 you um ah somebody listening right now is yelling at the yelling at the screen right now jay trying to remember what it is um but there's going to be a cash call for these funds and they're going to they're going to liquidate their prices. What she said is what I, I had said is that blew me away that these homes that are being picked up, the majority of these homes now are being picked up by people who own more than one home. Many of these people own three homes, so they're not their primary residence that they're buying. They're looking at these for investments. And as she said that, I thought to myself, holy cow, she's right. I own three homes. I mean, and if the market turns, I mean, I don't have to sell it, but the other people will have to start to unload those things just to get out from underneath them. And that's, we're going to be swamped with uh, a lot of these single family homes back on the market. And that's going to change everything. And, you know, I sit there and I listen to these things and I keep shaking my head. No, no, this is different. And I just have to remember, you know what? I was telling myself the same thing back in 2008. And boy, was I wrong. So, you know, I am... I listen to everything now. 